<laughs> Welcome to Hogwarts. To be like, ah. Uh, this is highly impractical. We also have a gavel. It's, can you control yourselves? Are you the judge? It's, with Origin, they picked up all the shining stars. Martin's just nodding it, repeatedly. Right? <laughs> what, what you want to do wait, is you want to put them on the same Do we need to do anything, That's or do we just let them fight? We decided I think it's interesting. So, like, this is, okay, this, this is, is, is the flawed system. This is the power ranking this ever. Is, Ladies what? and gentlemen, for the first time in Euphoria history, we've failed. We've failed miserably <laughs> to make it tier list. started off very poorly as this well. Is I blame you! Do not look this way. It's gonna be tough. I know, it's new for you. You used to sit where Drake was sitting. All right, you used right. to literally look this Welcome way. Welcome to the rambling intro of- Worst intro ever. You say that every intro. Euphoria, season three, episode one, AKA the return of the tier list, AKA the return of the Fischio. Welcome to Fischio. And uh, Vedius. And also Vedius. I just wanted to welcome you back versus a former host. <laughs> Thanks to Fischio. I wasn't I trying to true host to remember me. Yes. We're your hosts, uh, Frost Gurren and Dracos. And the Fischio. <laughs> Hi and, guys, I'm your only guest. And yeah, the only guest. There's three hosts now. This is how we're going to live for the rest of the season. The will be here every episode. It's a promise. It's not. Careful, that's a Reddit. Right? <laughs> that's a Reddit. Right. 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 That's, that's an old man's going right. straight to Reddit. Deficio every episode. <laughs> all right, today, preseason tier list. That's what all the episode is going to be about for the most part. We're also going to check in with you guys at home. What, who you think is overrated, underhyped, however you want to phrase it. We're going to look into it. Now, the two people battling it out today. This is a tier list battle. It's going to be Frost Gurren to my right. Wow. It's going to be Vettius to my left. Who determines who wins the battle? Well, that's going to be the judges, Vettius, and it's good that you asked because I see two perfectly qualified judges right in the middle of this table. Now, the important thing about this, before we go any further, timestamps, they're there. They're going to be more detailed. Uh, our regular producer, Phil, is is like committed to highly detailed timestamps. You're going to know when Deficio makes that weird sound where he breathes into the mic. That'll be timestamps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to log that one right in there. <laughs> Does it say in the timestamps when you say timestamps? Wait, are we uh, on Spotify? That's a work in progress. <laughs> isn't uh, the dive on Spotify? I was gonna say, isn't the dive on Spotify? <laughs> Wait, isn't the dive what on Spotify? Am I? You, yeah. you leave for like three months, and the first thing you do on our podcast is sell me out. You also <laughs> sold. We're gonna get Spotify, guys. It's a work in progress. It's gonna happen. Anyway, Davishio and I have to change our attire because I don't think we're appropriately dressed I to agree. judge tier lists, and we're gonna need a little narration, friends. Which one narration. you want? Do you want Davishio or do you want Dracos? I mean, I'll take Martin. Okay. How do I speak into this? What are they doing? Right now, they're picking up some black I mean, it, it's effectively a Harry Potter robe, oh, but... we have wizards! <laughs> Welcome to Hogwarts! They're now... I'm not a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Take me seriously, guys! I'm not a wizard! You guys can talk about something else if you want. Oh, I'm actually really just admiring your shoes, Martin. Oh. They're a nice... For those who are listening to our, what is it, ASMR? Podcast, not on Spotify. They're a lovely tobacco brown. Ooh, that's a nice wig you've got there, Dracos. Are you sure Daniel that's a wig? Rather. My ears are really big. They are now assembling and putting on a wig, which looks like a very old school... I'm going to say... <laughs> <laughs> Why did we do your hair? This we was ready. <laughs> Oh, you guys. We're ready. You guys look like um, poodles. You know, normally there's only one judge in court, right? There's not like a gang of. Them. This is called a tribunal. <laughs> you should be familiar with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we don't have one anymore in league, but we have one now on Euphoria podcast. <sighs> Best part is, it's really hard for me to look to the left <laughs> because it kind of covers That's everything. Good. So I have to be like, ah. <laughs> this is highly impractical. We also have a gavel. Test hit on the gavel. When That's are you guys going to hit the really gavel? Uh, when someone's out of order, Frosk. Keep it together. Court. Uh, do you remember, court the, is do you remember the spider web? That's what that is. This oh, is the okay. equivalent of the spider web. We now need a, a thing. I didn't episode. watch that episode. <laughs> Great. Thank you you missed a banger. For your support, Martin. <laughs> All right. So how this is going to work is we're going to go through each team. I put them in a random order. Uh, and you're going to make an argument for which tier you think they should be in and why. Actually, where they should rank. Let's do you go want to do one to ten or two? Should we do number one to ten? Well, I think it's better so if we go ten to one. I have made a one to ten ready. Oh, okay. One okay. to ten. It's on it Twitter, but I have adjusted it. Slightly. Surely you have changed that. I've adjusted, adjusted yeah, it. Yeah, you've changed that. All right, we'll go one to ten then. No, we should go ten to one. Oh, we can do that too. Well, I'm literally listing teams in a random order. Or do you want to just Listen, go ten to one? Listen, hosts, can you? Control yourselves? Can we come to some kind of alignment here? All right, here? fine. We'll go 10 to 1. It's more exciting that way. I agree with Froskerin. Okay. Then why did you fight me on it? Come on. Are it's, you the judge? It's the side. Did I give you the stupid $20 <laughs> Amazon costume? No. Okay. Calm down. All right. 10th place. Do we want to go Vedius? Frost was out of order. Vedius, 
You may present your argument for the 10th place team so, in the LEC. 10th place, I put uh, Rogue. Rogue is my 10th place team. Um, so it was largely, I mean, it's largely a toss up between Rogue, XL. We didn't ask and for SK. ninth place, Fetties. We no, asked no, no. for 10th. Well, I'm hey, trying to say hey, here. He's talking. Yeah, can, can you calm down, please? You want to make the gavel, Martin? You can make the gavel. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a toss up between these three teams, and based on the rosters that they have, um, when I look at Rogue as a team, I think that um, I don't think they've picked up the highest quality of players that can compete with many of the other teams. I don't think there's any real standout that they can look to play through outside of maybe Kikis. Um, and I think that Kikis' play style was already kind of figured out last split, and I don't know how much evolution he's going to make. So uh, I will, for now, put Rogue as number 10. That's, okay. that's who my number 10 is. I see. Exile better than Senkux, I understand. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. All right. All uh, right. Fischio, initial thoughts before we go to Frosk. I feel um, like he's wrong. I think... Wait, no, can I put my argument? Yes. Wait, okay. wait, Deficio, we need Deficio thoughts first. But, uh, I, I think I think your your reasoning um, makes okay sense. I think um, Rogue, to me, will be one of the teams that will struggle to make it into playoffs. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to, if I would put them, like, that far down or not. But I'm interested to hear more opinions because yeah, this is Frosk. not about me. It's about these two. I'm going to go grab the rating leaderboard thing because that's pretty important. I'll get it. Thank Judge you. Dracos. Wow, what a sucker. Wow. All right, Frost. Yeah, I mean, it's going to work. It's pretty good. It's pretty effective. Okay, I put XL in 10th place simply because, uh, mm. yes, it was between Rogue and XL. And when I looked at Rogue, I was like, they got Kikis as their jungler. And he's coming off of a pretty kick-ass, uh, you know, run with Vitality. And I say, So I think Kikis is in really strong form. Whereas when I was looking at XL versus Senkux, while both of them have had some highs and some lows, I just feel like XL is far more volatile uh, and his high impact plays and that he's either going to win you the game or he's going to lose you the game where Syncux is a bit more passive in that sense. He can maybe just not uh, be a factor in a game if we're thinking about even like the lowest bar of Syncux and then sometimes he will just shoot up and be that Danish mid laner that we all expected him to be, which is why I put XL farther down. Likewise, having a 10 man roster, like while that sounds cool and the idea of you know, looking ahead and developing your players. And the fact that it was kind of confusing about who was going to start, I don't think you're going to find any success early on from that. And a lot of the 10 players that they signed, you know, you could scramble that roster any way you want, and there's still just nothing that's really popping out to you. So flying back and forth from London, uh, who knows how long it's going to take to get their facility set up. For all I know, maybe their facility is already set up and it looks great, but from what I know in the LPL, when you have a, f a facility that takes time to get set up, it does delay your practice time because it's not like you hit the ground running. It's a very short off-season, and so I think that's also going to hinder them so they won't come into the season strong or ready to go until they're really used to the travel time. So that's why I put Excel down there. That's a lot of reasons. Now, uh Boom! I mean, I think both work. This is why I actually think it you know this is better than 1 to 10 because I think... But I think we're both in agreement that nine and ten is. Between that sounds these like two the coward's teams. way out. I mean, fair sounds enough. Sounds like you're not willing to <laughs> fight to the death for your opinions. Uh, Deficio, we have to decide a winner here on the first team. Who was more compelling in the end? I think it's uh, it's hard to say. I think a lot of the the Excel reasons regarding facilities and and travel is it's really hard to use as a way to kind of measure how good are they going to be or how successful because. As you said, for us, like, we don't know how much is, is set up already. I mean, we're doing the travel with, with Origin, and it's a little bit shorter, obviously, than, than, than flying but from But you guys have a, a facility that is already in use by Astralis, yes? Very true, very true. Uh, we obviously, yeah, we have, we have an office that's already up and running, and it was used uh, both by the entire Refresh company and, and Astralis, and it has multiple gaming rooms, so we obviously have that. But I, I, think I had to set them up for that. <laughs> from, from, I mean, I got to get my origin stuff Is in nice? at some point. I thought we were going to do, do like 10 nice minutes. Cars? I thought we were going to do like 10 minutes of me and how's it going and blah, blah, blah. And we jumped straight into this. So I got to get my origin stuff in there. But uh, I think from what I saw, XL does have the stadium. Mm. I assume that is set up uh, and, and ready to go. I don't know what they <laughs> the have. <rugby> <laughs> They've got the computers so, set so up. You, well, need, well, you need a gaming yeah, room. It, like that's, what they that's do done. have is I, they have some form of partnership with Twickenham. And the Twickenham Stadium that they are in, they have access to all the facilities. Yeah, so that's that a Twickenham lot of good provides. stuff. So, like, all the nutritionists that are there, uh, a lot I can of the game trainers on that. that are Probably there. Probably a gym. That's, that's what I've been told. Do so, like, they have a pretty good relationship. Does any combination of support staff get this team out of, like, bottom three? I mean, so if, if I want to look at, at, at some positives on, on XL, I think Kadrill is, is an underrated jungler. 
um, who actually can provide a lot of value to the team, especially when it comes to, to comms. I think your, your point about Exile obviously being an extremely explosive mid laner, um, if the team actually understands how to set him up to succeed. Campus lane. Exactly, campus <laughs> lane. I, I, I can see some value there. Uh, I actually have no clue what the current level is uh, with, with the team, but I think there are some things on the roster that I can see succeed, but I, I, I'm obviously a bit concerned regarding just the overall star power uh, on, on Excel's lineup. I'm excited for Expect. I'm curious what to see. But Deficio, at the end of the day, you're the resident judge. I'm the resident judge. We need to make a decision. Is Excel moving out of, are, they, are they out of this 10th place discussion? We can decide where they go next. Well, we, we on, we're only judging based on the arguments put forth. Yeah. So, I mean, they can show up later if they're not decided here. So, sure. who's 10th? So far, we have Rogue or I mean, Excel to choose from. had a lot of strong arguments. We need to caveat that this is start of split. We're not like predicting who's going to be. This is preseason ranking. So this is oh, how strong okay. they're going to be coming okay. into the split. Does that change okay. it at all for you? Well, I mean, because this is initial the schedule rankings. is going to influence some of that. Oh my is, don't, god! Don't come in here with your schedule analysis. <laughs> I mean, it will. But don't <laughs> stop. Sidious, if it the schedule determined determine. analysis, then they wouldn't need us. They wouldn't have analysts at all. They would just show the goddamn scoreboard. I mean, the reality <laughs> is right. Teams can look better <laughs> against certain teams than they can against. Like Origin could be made to look like fools. Against G2 and That's I why totally when Misfits understand. is like undefeated in the first half or whatever, you have to be the analyst and say they're not actually that good. That's why yeah. they. That's, that's why the, we that's exist. That's the analysis yeah. part of the job. Yeah, I Vettius. understand that bit. But what I'm saying is, if this is a preseason ranking where we're trying to predict who's going to look the best we're in the first few weeks, we're not who is the best? To predict I, the standings. We're just predicting the power levels. All right. Like who but is like Gogeta? That, and regardless, the initial one regardless that doesn't, so we that doesn't change on. the right. fact that just Rogue and XL nine and eight for me. Did you just say nine and eight? There's ten teams. Oh my god! Oh, I hit the game. Nine and ten. Respect the nine and ten. <laughs> Wait, so, so who? So you have you have Rogue XL. Who's SK. your number? So SK. Because I think doing eight. in the bottom doing a couple more teams this at a time is a little bit easier. Teams. Oh, my seven uh. really just blows okay. things open. <laughs> Hold on, tenth. Deficio. We gave it to Frost for now. Frosk, Excel. But I think you should probably do the A, B, C, D. I, All right, I we're put, doing the D thing. I that's, put Excel in easy. D. Excel yes. in D tier. Is uh, I did put Rogue in C tier. Follow up. Is Rogue in D tier with them? Deficio What first. do you think, Radius? I think they're in D tier with them. But I also think that Excel is just on paper better than Rogue. I think they have more, more from the get-go power than... Um, Rogue does. I think like Rogue has very many similarities to what the Rock App roster was from before. Uh, I think the fact that uh, Excel has uh, the expect factor, and while Excel, um, Exile is explosive, I do think that he has the ability to show a lot of powerful stuff, and I have more faith in his playmaking ability than I do in Senkex's. So I think that Excel should, to me, on paper, look stronger than Rogue does. I think they have better infrastructure. I think they're investing more into the team. I just think Excel is stronger than Rogue. I think Rogue in in best of one, um, with uh, the with the with the top side of the map they do have can actually take games off uh, off teams. And I think Senkux is, is again. I say this every year, but he's it's one he's year. one of those Maybe names it's where. His year. Well, it's it's just like I think I think he will have games where he is he is doing well. Um, I'm not saying it's every game, but I think he will have some of the games where he is doing well. For sure. Um, and as a combination with the top side of the map, I think they can do something. Um, so I think if I had to like, you know, put them both in the same tier, I think that would not be unfair. But I could also see an argument for moving Rogue slightly further up. But I don't think by 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 a lot. I think those teams are going to be pretty close to each other in level. So my mentality was is that mid jungle is going to be the big priority in the meta, and I just had that much faith in Kikis uh, after his incredible performance with Vitality, and so that's why I gave Rogue the edge over Excel, and it really that's just fair. came down because there's fair arguments both sides. I 100% agree with a lot of what Vettius is saying, and it's just at the end of the day, I was like, if this role means so much, I'm not ready to immediately just count this guy out, and I think he can be the X factor, especially starting on a new team which Kikis has known to just explosively get off the uh, or sprint off the starting line and then make an impact because this is off season like I don't think Rogue are going to you know sit here I think unfortunately Kik is probably or Kik is probably a mercenary probably going to drop off maybe Senkux gets out of his rut maybe he sinks down into it and then Rogue will find their place at the bottom of the standings but I think we generally agree that these two are the bottom teams is that fair? that's the current that's my expectation right now mm. I mean if safest bet for now would probably be yes yeah 
Maybe waiting to see more from Sencox. Maybe someone else on this team can pop off. Maybe we see. I mean, there's some interesting names on both teams, in my opinion, yes. that can actually do a and lot. Like, I don't think they're just going to lose every game. No, I no, think that I, they have I, potential, and it's right? All but someone has, to be, someone has to be at the bottom. And compared to the rest of our league, which I think is surprisingly stacked with talent this split, someone, these are the two teams right now that sit there. And then for me, SK is just one above them at eight. We're jumping ahead. But I'm going to put Rogue in D tier for now because I always hate when one team is in D tier. They feel lonely. I mean, it's also unfair to only have one team down there. Yes. All right, next up. Vedius brought it up. SK, give me your argument. What sets them one above these two teams, and are they in C tier? Uh, I think you should actually start with Frost, because I think she has way more compelling <laughs> arguments for... Unless, <laughs> unless you want to put SK like high. I most, also this... think we should reveal who we put in seven, because they're going to be dramatically different. Okay, wait. How do we do? Do you want to give me a one, two, three? Well, no, I'll give you. So I'll tell you my eight and seven, and you tell me your eight and seven, okay? You guys um, do it like well, that. my oh, eight and seven? Yes, because we need to do eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We I can't got just it. skip it. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> All right. So my eight is um, SK, and then my seven is Spice. <gasps> Wait, what's yours? Uh, <laughs> mm, my uh, eight is Misfits. And oh. my seven is SK. Send her back to China. <laughs> <laughs> Get her out of here. Sullivan's <laughs> back. He's going to be great. So as and Gorilla are on that team. Go. We I need to leave. I completely <laughs> understand that this team looks so good. And I do think that Misfits eventually will be gods. But I don't think it is going to start off. This is preseason rankings and how they're going to go in. And my problem when I look at the Misfits roster is who is going to be the hard carry of that team. If it's a roster that's built around a franchise player like Hansama, A, I don't really like when teams are built around the ADC. Uh, and I know I spoke a lot for RNG, but I was paid to do that, and now I'm not. <laughs> so, and you'll see the kind of the same reasoning when it comes to Shalka. <laughs> Because it's built around upset, but I just don't rank Hansama as high as I rank upset, which is why Schalke ended up higher than Misfits. And I think that with Febby coming back into Europe, while we do have um, footage of Febby kind of reaching those highs, he just got out of NA. There's no NA LCS mid laners for him to beat up on in Europe. It's a completely different level of competition. And again, if it comes down to the idea that the meta is around mid-jungle priority, I've got plenty of faith in Maxlor. I don't have any faith in Febby right now. So, Until he so actually shows that he can return to form, that's when Misfits will start to pick it up. Otherwise, I feel like it's going to be the rest of Misfits just trying to hard carry when they don't have a natural born leader on that team. I did not want, I did not expect to be talking about Misfits this early so in yeah, the show. So like, yeah, I, I agree with all those reasons, but I wouldn't put them in eighth at the first half of this. Like, I still think from like I think a, that's the only time you can put them down. I think they're going to uh, fall a little bit flat, have some massive growing pains, and then they'll pick it up and they're going to be I still think that they will be dark horses for the title, but it is going to take some time to warm up. But I, st I just, I can't see them being eighth early on in this, but I think that they just have like, Did you a watch lot his NALCS games? Yeah, I did, but like, I still look at the talent on this roster, and so I, I believe that Febivan and Senkux have very similar styles, um, but I'd like to believe that Febivan is... Uh, stronger than Senkux. Maybe that's not true now. I don't know because I haven't seen Fovin play in Europe. Um, but I think that he should be an upgrade in terms of the mid lane. You could make an argument that the top lane is either a sideways move in the sense that Soaz should be able to hold his own against Alfari no problem any day of the week. He has a lot of experience and a lot of value. Um, and then you have you should have mechanically a very talented bot lane, a very smart bot lane too with Gorilla being introduced and uh, Max Thor in there as well. So like just the talent alone. Yep. Should put them above eighth for me. It was my, like, it was my. I was going on a risk. I'm trying to like find the analysis. I've thought real hard about it because I agree with you. Like so as top lane, that sounds just as good. But I'm like, what are you doing? I'm trying to show him to get closer to the mic okay. while not interrupting you and disrupting the show. <laughs> Thank you. Oh That's no, you're fine. fine. He you're was fine. whispering. He was making words at me. I was trying to point. Yeah, sorry, and, it didn't work. And it's totally fair to look at so as to look at Han Sama to look at Grill and say like there's enough power in that side lane. But with the changes to teleport, so as can no longer just you know, win multiple points of the map and he loses a lot of his potential as like that veteran and that expert and the ability to read the, the map because he has to focus more on the 1v1. You can't just free TP into a sideline. We were talking about this, you know, earlier on in the day and I think that inherently hurts because when I look at Han Sama and Gorilla, like I don't know what the communication is going to be but like. But 8 Frost. Yeah, 8 is pretty low. Fifuccio, <laughs> is that too low? Um, I think the interesting thing about Misfits is I think you can make 
20 great arguments for why they're going to be an S tier team. I think you can make 20 great arguments for why they will, you know, be, let's say, a C tier team coming into the split. So they're like fifth. Um, because there is. <laughs> so by the law of averages. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying there's an average in that. I'm just like, I actually think a lot of the arguments Frost brings up as worst case scenarios are not completely unreasonable. Like, I think when I look at the Misfits lineup, I think they're very meta dependent especially in the start. Because I think if, if the meta is extreme focus on laning phase and like very, very fast, aggressive games, um, I said this in my interview with, uh, with, with the Shock Caller, like I don't look at Febivan and Source and say their main strength is the early laning phase and like quick, fast, early games where they can smack people left and right. I think for them, they're super, like they're very, very strong, especially late game players. Um, Source obviously will bring a ton, uh, as you said, also as a veteran, as a leader. But if it's just like all about early game, I look at this Misfits lineup and I think they're weaker then than the Misfits of last year, where they had Hansama and Mickey as a combination in the bot lane that literally just tries to win lane from minute one. Gorilla is not the same kind of player. So I think, I think Misfits, if it is all about like initial power ranking, they're, for me, actually probably the hardest team to place. Mm -hmm. I fully understand fans looking at the lineup saying S-tier instantly. Yeah, How can they sure. not be S-tier? Um, I think they're going to be pretty middle of the pack initially. Um, so I probably wouldn't put them eight. Um, I would probably put them more like number six-ish coming into yeah. to, to, to the split. But again, that's also just because I have so many questions I need to see answered on stage. You raised a lot of good ones. You brought up some other ones like... There's a lot of star power on this lineup, but star power, and we've seen this time and time again in League of Legends, does not always click together instantly or it does not always fit the current meta or whatever it is, and then you don't get the value you were expecting to get initially from the name. But for me, they are, they're more middle uh, early on, uh, and I would rate them uh, among like a lot of teams like, like us, uh, as an example, yep. like uh, Schalke and, and these kind of guys. I agree. So I'm curious then what your seven is if misfits are your... She's got SK. It's is SK. it an SK? Yeah. So SK is an interesting one, and I think if we just talk about SK for a second, because misfits, you talk about all these question mark questions. Do you have less questions for SK? Do you have more I initial faith in I watched about? so much Mad Lions to prep for SK <laughs> because my mentality was like, I'm never going to beat Vettius when it comes to knowing the history of the EU LCS teams, but what I can do is I can hard prep on these teams that are coming into the uh, LEC and kind of like make them or champion their narratives, and so I looked super in-depth on the Mad Lions, and I feel like Selfmade in particular, he is the jungle talent that I'm just going to be ramming down everyone's throats. I think he <laughs> is good. Stop swearing. This yeah, you, is PC this is friendly. You. Yeah, podcast. I was gonna say you got. We said this. You're a host now. You can't just <laughs> drop f bomb. This isn't the wild west of China, bro. Yeah. You gotta slow down. <laughs> I do agree. I think self made's good. I've heard a lot of positive things about Perian too. Um, while I don't think he had the greatest showcasing when he played for SKT. To get picked up by SKT has got to still mean something in some capacity. And I still think... Shout out to my boy Profit, by the way. We haven't forgot. That's yeah. coming up at least once <laughs> yeah. this year. There we go. Uh, you've, you've still got to have some uh, level of talent in order to get picked up by them. And I think that here in Europe, he has the ability to showcase it. I mean, we heard um, Fnatic on their, uh, on their stream where they talked about teams and all the different teams. That, that actually, uh, Nemesis had a lot of praise for Purim. Mm -hmm. Said he was pretty good. So... I look at this team and I'm like, they've got three members of Mad Lions. Um, I forget who their support is. Dreams. Dreams. Oh, it is Dreams. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Dreams, like, so the last and time I believe this one was Mysterious Monkeys. Mm. Um, Mortality Academy before that. Ah, yes, of course. Oh, well, uh, sorry, last year. Last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since yeah. how he fell um, behind. <laughs> and I think that that roster, the fact that they have three members of Mad Lions, should have Senji. I know Whirlib, all I've heard about is how much he's grown compared to the last time he was in LCS. Self-made is pronounced supposed to Whirly be. Whirly B. Thank you. B. It's not. Please don't take it. I just really want it to be pronounced you that way. You messed up his name now. <laughs> it's such a good name. Uh, Whirly B is so good. And I've heard positive things about Crown Shot and I've seen some good stuff. Mm. Like some hit or miss moments, but overall pretty solid. So like, I just think that the added synergy that this team will have coming straight in. I kind of look at them as a Vitality-esque team, like you that. know, coming straight out of, mm -hmm. um, like, 
it wasn't it wasn't challenger I, it wasn't challenger at the time was it well it was the giants lineup that came that qualified through the challenger yes that yes got yes yes, up, yes obviously by vitality that also and played then, um, in MVP as well yeah, and yeah, like yeah. they they changed like one member mm -hmm. i think it was one or two members mm -hmm. and um that's just kind of what i see from this sk lineup what i see from the former mad lions and i think they can surprise i just kind of have to rate them lower on the spectrum because i don't know how they stack up against l you know lec talent um, but so, I have confidence in them. But I put them in eighth. That's you, where so I have them. When you compare them to so Misfits. So they're C tier or? So I would put them in C tier. Hmm. Um, and I, I just want to preface this by saying I could very easily see them move into B tier. Hmm. Um, but I, I need to know how they perform on stage. Because like I've seen so many rookies just crumble in the first few weeks of the LEC where they just they, they don't have that star performance like so many of our rookies have. Um, but... Yeah, I, I have faith in them, and I have. I just have. I guess I believe more in the young talent a little bit more than I do in, in Rogan XL, which seems to showcase a lot of the old talent. I, guess. I just want to say because I think I sound less crazy if I get to stack them both up together. And so, if it's Misfits versus SK, when I was trying to debate this, you look at Gorilla, huge tenure, uh, laned with Prey, didn't get a lot of resources. Now playing with Hansama, known as like a kill-oriented bot lane, so I didn't know how that communication was going to go. Versus Crown Shot, who's known for scaling ADCs, and Dreams, who's like a mechanical Korean solo queue god apparently, so has like a very high level, likes to play aggressive, uh, all-in supports, which are definitely in meta. So I was like, okay, well. These two star names on Misfits sound good. I actually think there might be a difference of style here, and we don't know what the growing pains are going to be like. So I'm going to say that eh, it might be a wash either way, but I'm not like completely discounting Dreams and Crown Shot. You then look at all the rumors around Pyrian about how strong he actually is versus the question marks that I have about Febby, and I'm like, okay, I'm actually going to lean towards the SK roster here. I love self-made. Like, I think he's just really good and very smart and intelligent. Max War, obviously, also very strong, very intelligent. But then again, it's still like a wash. I don't heavily weight that one way or the other, especially when you take into account the mid-jungle um, mid duo. And then I'm actually going to weight it towards SK if Pyrian's like really popping off. And then you go Soaz versus Whirlib. And Whirlib is known or was known as like a 1v1 Jax one trick for the longest time. Now he's diversified his style, he can play anything. So I still has all of that experience, but like Deficio and Martin is saying, in the current meta, I think it means less, especially if everything's about early fast paced game. And then I'm like, okay, Whirlib's also a very experienced player. He's been playing for a long time. He knows how to play that lane phase. So again, it's kind of like a wash, which is why I think when you look at the names, it's like, how could you say that SK would be better than Misfits? I'm like, well, if you take into account how the meta is going, I actually don't think that it just completely blows them out of the water. And again, so early on. So can we just, can we get that on going, record? SK deep. versus Misfits. She has predicted SK. That is not when what I said. Home, that's what she's done. <laughs> I, you said that they're, ooh, yeah. Would you be willing to make that prediction? SK beating Misfits? If it happened day one, I mean, I'm not saying that it's like a 70-30, but I don't but think they'd it's. win. But I don't think it's like a seven. I, I don't but know. if you win. put them above, yes, actually, win. I would say because be, I would say because of Pyrian, if Pyrian is actually playing as well as we are rumored to hear, then I would say yes, because I believe that that's the key difference maker. All is right. that Febivin's not in form yet? But the ultimate debate is which Febivin could come mm. in and just so slam I it down. Think, right. I think Misfits is B tier, but clearly Frost thinks they're C tier. So, so how on. do we settle this, judges? Before we, yeah, so that's important. We're gonna get to Misfits. Let's lock in a couple of teams here because we just got really waylaid by the Misfits super team. Dream. <laughs> I'm siding more with Vidius for this. For the one. SK, would you do you do you think SK or BT? Well, it's more the SK versus Misfits. No, 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 no. Kind of I thing. put uh, SK in C. I think that's where I put. Oh SK. no, I put them up in B. Yikes. Yeah. They're going C, girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're you're off the rails. What happens if I'm right? I, I think SK though, <laughs> just to, to add like Then a you bit. can have a judge costume next <laughs> No, I want something I think this should be the best. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think putting SK B tier is terrible, but then I think Rogue and XL should be C tier and there yes. is no D tier. Yes. All right, so that's why I mean, well, how does I'm that make that. any sense? Because I think then if to me, when I look at SK and I think uh, I look at the lineup, I, I see a lot of the the build in synergy from Mad Lions. Mm -hmm. I see less of a ceiling compared to the Vitality lineup of last year. Why? Rude. A lot of that is actually based on, I don't think this team... So, Vitality's greatest strength is mechanically gifted players who are very aggressive, mm -hmm. which ended up being super successful last year and also with the way you know the game was played at Worlds. I think SK will be less explosive. If I compare Pyrian to Jizuke, I see very, very different types in terms of play style. 
if I compare Crownshot to Attila, I also see very different players. Like Crownshot to me is, is he's, a, he's a solid 80 carry, but he's not the pick Draven flash in your face 24 seven and I'm gonna be crazy. And I think Vitality's play style with the players that just clicked so, so well last year and, and again this year, because they keep four out of five, right? I think SK will, will, will actually be pretty good. Um, I like the lineup quite a lot, uh, but I just don't see them have the same ceiling as Vitality, where you can like say within a year you go to Worlds, which Vitality did. So I think there is a difference there. Now, I think it is important to point that out, but I do have one question. Frosk, you wanted to start a wager. These are some stakes that I like. <laughs> now, Vettius, you're pretty confident, let's say, Five weeks in, that Misfits will finish above SK in the standings. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Extremely I would confident. say that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Do three weeks. Uh, What's your time frame? Uh, it depends. When does the meta shift? I don't know, Frosk. That's the Ignore risk. Ignore the meta for now. Don't you don't know what it's going to be. Believe. Yeah, we don't team. actually know what the meta is. I have pro players whispering in my ear, and then on day one, game one, it's like nothing that the pro players have told me. And that's happened before. Stage is always <laughs> because, different. Because yeah. this is going to get very misconstrued. But let me again say it very clearly. I think Misfits will be a dark horse for the title. I think by the end of the split that they will be right like in this. position like, to <laughs> take it. Guys, I see you're predicting them S tier. I want you to know that I put them down in the dumpster and they're now my dark horse. It's slightly different. It's edgy. It's it's cool. We right, like but it. that but was the whole point. I of wanna, the I wanna bring it back. I'm trying, yes, the stakes, the bet. How long? How long? When do you uh, think SK are going to be ahead of Misfits? Week three, week two. I'm not going to give you week one. Let me check what. Oh, you checking games. the schedule now? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> no, I'm checking how many games <laughs> Fetty's have been grinding in solo queue. <laughs> <laughs> you came in here wanting this bet. How can you not know the circumstances? Because we'll come back to, to the bet later. We we'll got to get more teams on the right. table. Yeah, let's here. get more come teams on, guys. on the table. We will return with the SK versus Misfits bet later in the episode. For now, you're right. More teams in. Uh, next up, so we have three teams. We put SK and C. We called them the eighth team, I think, if we were going to order them. But now we need to talk about seventh. So you had SK seventh. Vettius, we didn't get to hear you. I had seventh. Splice. I you had to say Splice earlier. Really, yeah. I did have so Splice in six. They were my uh, fifth. Um, the reason why, when I originally tweeted out my power rankings and I put them in fifth was because I think that when I looked at that lineup, they have a lot of potential. And I don't really like using that word, but the reason for it was because... Vizitrachi and Zerse, the best, when they performed best in their careers was when they were together on New Unicorns of Love. And they made that final with Exile against G2. Um, on top of that, I think Norskaren, he was one of the best supports last split. Kobe has always been a very good AD carry. And while last split in the first half, he wasn't a standout. In the second half, people were like talking about him as being like maybe even top three top AD carries in our league. Like he's been very just, he's solid, he's reliable. And mm -hmm. you can you can look to him and see someone who can play the game. And then there's Humanoid who I've heard rumors that some people consider him stronger than Nemesis, right? Now I don't know how much validity there is in those rumors, um, but like you look at this roster and you could see the building blocks. You can see this be another splice from last year where in the beginning they finished fourth. And then in this split, they almost made it towards themselves. And then they took G2 to five games in the gauntlet. And in the playoffs, they took Schalke to five games, you know? Um, and I look at this roster and I saw, oh, I see loads of potential, I see loads of potential. Um, but when you got to look at the beginning of the split, I do think they will be very slow to get to that point. I think the way in which they've kept Peter Dunn, I think the way in which they, they structure their coaching and their teaching, um, it'll take time. And I don't think they're going to set high expectations to perform right from the get-go. And so that's why I've put them in seventh now, because I don't think that the roster will immediately click from the start. But I do think that they will be moving up throughout the split and they will be a team that will be hard fighting for playoffs. Now, Frosk, I do want to get your opinion one second on the splice lineup, but before we go to you, Deficio, how do you feel about the splice roster changes? So the upgraded players specifically, Vizichachi, versus Odawamne, how do you feel about Norskaren in the bot lane versus Kasing, and how do you feel about Humanoid versus Niski? Where do you see upgrades? Where do you see downgrades? Oh, that's um, it's actually really hard to answer because I think I think Splice obviously had a bit of a rebuild um, where it might, I don't know how much it actually changes the team's play style, yeah. um, which is going to be really interesting to follow with them. I think Humanoid is is a really interesting player, and, and he's one of those EU rookies that I have pretty high hopes uh, of, where I'm like, this, 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 I'm not saying he's like the new Caps or anything, but mm. I, I think he's, 
He, he's, he's a really solid player. Chachi, of course, is probably the most consistent tank player you can actually get <laughs> at this point. Shen. Um, I'm dreaming of the, the old Chachi sometimes where he's renekton between two turrets and just like killing someone and then randomly dying to ganks. But uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see kind of how he develops uh, during the split. I think a lot of what Vedia says makes, makes sense. I think for me, if I had to rank them, and this is kind of what I meant with moving SK to B tier and remove the, the D tier, is initially coming into the split, like I think Splice and SK might not be too far from each other um, in terms of overall level. And it would almost feel bad for me on a power ranking to put SK under Splice instead of saying, going into the split, like Splice has a lot of new members, SK have kept or had the three Mad Lions guys. Like, I think they might be pretty similar in uh, in overall level, but Ooh, that's not. I, I think Spice is super gone. hard to judge, though. Um, and yeah, I'm, I, 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 would really, I really have no clue how, how 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 they're gonna play. I so, actually have no clue. Frost, can I get your opinion on on that statement on Splice and SK coming in at the similar level, and then maybe share a little bit on on how you feel about well, Splice? She put Splice at six. I put and well, SK well, seven. Yeah, so they are very close to each, close other, to each right? other. So I so. did B tier, which I did Splice, SK, and Shalka, and then on C tier I put Misfits above Rogue. But if I could have put like a big gap between Misfits and Rogue, I would have. And then on D tier I had XL, which I guess now you would change it to Rogue and XL on D tier. C tier, I would just put Misfits to start, and then Splice, uh, SK, and Shalka are all on B tier for me. So mm. pretty much we're all in agreement that Splice and, and SK are right next to each other, which I think for I think that's people, okay. which is, I think, fine too, but I think for people who aren't as familiar with the Mad Lions as maybe some of you guys are, would be pretty surprised given that Splice is a little bit more well-known. You're keeping Xerse, you're keeping Kabe, sure, these two like players who have had a lot of time on the lineup. I, mean, I really want to reinforce this idea that Splice have proven in like from their organization structure i know they've lost some of their organization members like the backbone behind their coaching staff no i mean they have the same three coaches I, as last split. i thought they lost one of them no duke uh, is still there peter is still there and james is still there oh okay well then they still have the core coaching staff and yeah, yeah. and they've they have proven, a really really good coaching staff they've proven that they can turn teams into better teams right they've turned uh in i, I used the words uh, when we were prepping i think splice turned good players into great ones um, I think that Niski coming in last year wasn't that great. I think he was like a solid player, but I think by the end of the year, everyone considered Niski to be He's like good. a top mid laner yeah, in yeah. Europe, you know, like really competing for those spots. And like, I think... Uh, Sucks to lose a man. Yeah, it was a real shame. Um, and I think that what they've demonstrated is that they can grow and nurture talent. And that's why when I look at this roster, I think that it can be a strong contender for playoffs and they can do some good stuff. But I just think it takes time. And that's why I put them very... Because I think they're rebuilding, very similar to SK, which is why I put them in C tier. I, I, think I also just want to add in, I think uh, Splice just announced the academy team. Mm -hmm. um, obviously said they were going to be in Spain. Um, that's a really, really strong academy team. Like, that lineup is really, really good. Do you know who was? I, I don't um, have seen it yet. Check it on Twitter, my okay, friend. Yeah, I'll do it's got Freeze. It's, it Freeze is in the oh, bottom yeah, with Prime. Yeah. Tear Wolf is in the jungle. Hatrix is the mid laner. And top lane mm. is uh, Orome. Yeah, I did read that. Yeah, it's pretty good. And, yeah. like, I think that lineup has a really good mix also of some hungry players, but also there's, like, a veteran like Freeze. I think with the... The size of the coaching staff they have and how, how developed uh, Peter and Duke and these guys are uh, with what they want to do with the team. I think them actually being able to have that many good players on a roster could give them a lot of advantages in terms of overall practice. Like not just normal scrims, but also potential 1v1s, talking about the game between the two teams and so on. So I really like, like the, the whole foundation ar around Splice. Um, I just want to see what actually happens in the game uh, with the players they have. And there will always be question marks around someone like Humanoid. There just will be question marks yeah. about him because he's entering a field of, you know, a lot of good EU mids. He's one of three rookies. Like, uh, if he ends up being the best of the three rookies and he's, let's say he slots in as like a top four mid laner instantly, that's a ton of firepower suddenly yeah. when you have Cobb as an AD carry as well um, for, for, for Splice. And they're one of those teams where if I had to bet on a team who makes playoffs, I, I would put them in my, my top six uh, initially. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, I think just coming into the split because of things will take time. That's why I want them with their escape. All right, we're up to eight. But that's so, why... Hold on. 
We got to start ranking teams because we're spending a lot of time on the bottom, and I do want to get fair, some Frost more time. To be fair, Frost has put no top. input on Splice yet, or very little. Because no, you guys bring up all good points, and this is also why ultimately when I was going between Shalka and Splice, that I put emphasis on Splice. Like Shalka's uh, roster looks really strong, especially because Upset um, is such a potent and powerful ADC. But again, if it's humanoid versus, have we decided how to say Abad Abad Abadage? Abadage. It's based name. on. Um, Age of Empires 2, one of the races when you click. Oh, uh, really? He goes, I'm a doggy. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank nice. you for that nice. fun fact. But, and then, um, so Humanoid getting the hype versus Abadage, and then the support coaching staff behind Splice, that was what put them over the edge for me. Whereas if you look at Shalka, you know, bringing in amazing brand new to that support staff, the fact that they lost their, thanks to Fischio, that they lost their previous coach who took them to a final. Oh yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and they've lost other support uh, infrastructure there. I That's why I put Shalka beneath them, despite the fact when you look at that roster and you want to get behind upset and you want to be super excited for this guy versus just kind of the, uh, you know, backbone and, and core of Kabe. That was it. It was like, Peter Dunn, yes. Mm. <laughs> all right, I need you guys to rank teams. I need you guys to lock some stuff in. I well, think I personally think that Splice, Schalke, and SK should all be in C tier. I think they should be in B tier. But I mean, uh, we're saying the same things. They're all close to each other. You want to put Misfits all right. in what B tier. I, what I ultimately <laughs> don't, I don't want an S tier. That's what I'm getting to. Because I don't want to put anyone in S, which is why I want a D. But this is, it's wait, the do you same want, thing. what? We can right. get to that later. This <laughs> is convoluted. <laughs> this is too much. I'm going to ask a question. Splice. C tier. Seventh? Sixth? Seventh, sixth. I've also got Shock for some reason. We kind of jumped ahead there. Frost, do you have gun. Splice in B or do you have them in C? I have them in B. Frost wins, in my opinion. Frost wins? I'm going to make that call. That's fine. Misfits. But does that mean SK also go in B or are they staying in C? They're staying in C. Okay. We put them in C. Misfits. Oh, that's rough, man. That B for me. I put them in C, but it was kind of like a B minus a C plus. That's not, you, you've been B. backtracking a lot on the mystery. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, you have to put them at least B, in my opinion. At least. I think you have to put them in B. Bottom of B is now I Misfits. Schalke. I mean, you. Um, Schalke's man, in the same Misfits thing. Is so hard. Schalke's Rain. in there. Hard. You're making a call. Put Schalke's in B. B. Schalke's B. But they're Schalke's behind B. Splice. Now, real quick. I like Schalke. I like real, Schalke too. Real quick, give me one reason you like Schalke. One reason. You all really are enjoying talking about new so, teams. I think just on paper, their roster is strong. I initially underestimated it, um, mm. but when you think about how the meta is, it's partially, um, but also just um, the aggression that this team will have, I think it will suit them in the meta. Memento is always known for being a strong early game jungler, pretty aggressive. You have Ignar upset in the bot lane. Ignar was known for playing melee supports. He liked to trade. He liked to be aggressive. That's why he paired up so well with Han Summer. And I think Upset's not afraid to play that way, even though he didn't typically play that way. I think he has the ability to. So I think that when you have a strong, active aggro jungler and you have a strong, active aggro bot lane, that should just fit the meta. I I, early on in the split, I just think it'll be good. Totally understand what you're saying. Great. But we've seen some real rough games. Like, Memento was the shining light on what was otherwise a yeah. sinking roster, but Ignar had a really rough year. Yeah, and I'm, I, I fully agree with that. I'm just and like, that's why I put them all in the same tier, because I think they're all, I think you can interchange Splice with, and Schalke oh. quite easily, I think. All right, give me your one point as to what you like or one criticism for Oscar, and you can choose. You can support them. You can I turn like Schalke's them. roster, but I think that with Ignar having a rough year, you don't automatically get to say that Upset and Ignar are just this super-powered bot lane, because Ignar could have the exact same rough LCK performance. Um, obviously, could. we could say maybe it's a different level of competition, but I think across the board, all of LEC's bot lanes actually got an upgrade. Support used to be a position that was really weak in general across the board in Europe, and now I think it's really powerful. Um, so it's not just kind of a free ride, whereas once in the past, like if Ignar Upset came into last year's support pool, I'm like, damn, this bot lane just destroys everyone. Now I'm like, not so much. And then again, the support staff. It's amazing who's taking up the coaching position. You guys position. are all really bad at doing one point, by the way. You guys Whoa. each yeah. want to just keep going. Fuck. So I'm going to get real quick rating for Schalke. What tier are they in? And B. B. I think they're in B. I just think they're under splice. B under splice, under splice, over splice, or under I splice? I mean, I think they're alongside splice. I think they're both very right. similar. What is this? <laughs> Pick it over under. I'm, I'm telling you, right? They're the splice, same. Splice is seven. Schalke is six. Okay. <laughs> okay. Martin, you're gonna make a call here, and you get one. Shalka point. Upset is really, really good. That's a great single point. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, for the record, good that's point. what there I was looking go. for. Thank Nailed you. Nailed it. I could add a second one, but I won't. Just for you. I'm proud of you. I think, though, the whole Misfits thing, 
Like, I think on paper with the roster they have, they have to be a, a step above and sorry to jump back on the Misfits one. Uh, even with the question marks that can be. Yep. Like, on paper, when you're doing an, an initial power ranking, yep. I think putting Splice, Schalke, SK is what I would do, and then I would put Misfits A, but this is your power ranking. I'm just a judge. And based on arguments, uh, I actually don't know who won the Schalke one. I don't know who won the Schalke one either. Definitely put them B, for sure. They're all B. Right, now throw Origin so in what, there, So what, we got too. Misfits, Schalke, and Splice all in B? All right. Now put Origin in there. Just to clarify for Ooh. everyone watching, I have this board in front of me because Vettius didn't bring the carrier thing over. and I've There's a carrier just, thing? There's a carrier thing. I'm too lazy to grab it. It's also really hard to edit. No, oh, okay, he's going to grab it. Anyway, we have <laughs> D tier is XL and Rogue, C tier is SK, and then B tier consists of Splice, Misfits, and Schalke with debate as to what order Misfits potentially above for yeah, some people. I don't people. like this power ranking so far. You don't like this power well, guess. I'm a guest. You... He I, just I killed XL. Wait a they second. fell off. There's nothing I can do. You murdered true. them. Hold on. Deficio, you're the judge. Why don't you like yeah, the you power ranking? You have absolute authority. But, but we had to base it on the arguments, and they only argued Misfits either. You can say they're both wrong. So, wouldn't we can't, because one has to win. Wait, where would you put Misfits, Martin? I, based on roster, A tier. But that's just the difference, right? I haven't put them in. I haven't given anyone an S tier, so I put them in B, right. and then everyone else is in A for me. I think we, we want to... Do you want to do OG now or Vitality now? I'll let you guys choose. Give me that origin. Let's hear the arguments. Hand me the thing, Vettius. Do, do you we just want to do thing? who we no, have just, in you, you, you stay over there. Can you, you put can. us S++? plus <laughs> plus, Like outside the For scale? What? Like jawlines? Sure. I remember Wait, trying to do, do, I, do you remember trying to do this with Max when he wanted to put Misfits six. in wildcard tier? Yeah. I feel like Misfits were in wildcard right, tier. He was actually <laughs> he was right, right because they started 9-0 and then they went like, what was it, zero something? Yeah, like, it was not great. So here you go. This is my power ranking. No, Betty, <laughs> don't. Stop. <laughs> Give me the origin magnet. That's oh, all want, I that's wanted you from wanted. you. Okay. Nothing else is legitimate. This is not an official tier list. Okay. Froskeren, where do you have origin? I put origin in A. A tier. Ooh. I have you guys ranked fourth. Ooh. All right. So, I also have Origin ranked fourth, right? Nice. However, equally I vying for your I favor. I do not put them in A tier, right? This I just think be some that. some semantics bullshit. Yeah, right. No, yeah, yeah. sure. Semant it is, uh -huh. right? <laughs> Stop swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm <laughs> <Bettius. laughs> um, <laughs> I'll bang the gap with Frosco. Don't make me do it. We'll so, the gap. thing about Origin, right? And Deficio. I actually think DeFisher was surprisingly humble in his interview because from an analyst's perspective, you look at this roster, right? And the bright sides to me were that they took the shining stars on multiple teams from last year yep. that weren't that successful, right? Now, obviously, the debate, like, obviously, Nuke Duck was a on a successful team and picking him up is obviously great because I strongly believe he's a top three mid laner in Europe. Um, top two. <laughs> sure, if you want, right? Um, it's so crazy when Perks three. left. Well, you kind of lost the mid laner. Yeah, when top, Perks left, top three got a little bit easier, didn't it? Uh, but I mean, it depends which Jizuke <laughs> shows up, right? We'll That's see. True. Um, That's, true. Um, That's why Vitality are in my S tier. Right? Stop. Stop. Hang on, we haven't got there. Stop jumping, right? <laughs> so, so with Origin, they picked up all the shining stars, and that is cold. Whenever we talked about Unicorns of Love, it was always cold, every yep. time, right? Sure. So you put him on a team full with uh, talent. It, you just kind of see Martin's just nodding it, repeatedly. Right? Yes. Alfari, <laughs> yes. he, for me, he was the guy that was most consistent on Misfits, mm -hmm. even when they were losing. Yes, I think yes. the fans criminally underrate how good Alfari is. So, right? I'm, but, on, I'm no, not done. No, I know you're not, but yeah, I'm going to pretend you. <laughs> you. We Stop. like this. I understand what he you're just, enjoying about this. Right? Put you in A tier. But hold on. Right? This is the thing: is you said that you, they're not in A tier, and that's no. the part that's important for me. What's the separator then? Because you've had nothing but great things to say. Because so what's this, the separator? This five is a brand new team. Sure. That they're all, all have brand different new. ideas about how to work together and how to operate. Right now, I'll tell you the difference: Vitality, Fnatic, and um, G two. G two only have small changes into what I believe are already pretty effective machines in how to operate, G2 right? You have a massive change. You can debate that. This is my perspective, okay? I'm, just, I'm <laughs> throwing right? it out there. I believe that the changes, while significant, will not be the same as five different people all coming to agree on how the game should be played, I right? I completely- Stop interrupting me! <laughs> Let me finish my argument and then you can challenge it. <laughs> um, so for Origin, I just think the fact that it is five players that have never played with each other in any capacity on any team before. Oh, except for um, Lemon Dogs. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, <laughs> never um, forget Lemon Dogs. <laughs> um, 
I think that they just don't have the cohesion yet for me to confidently just put them in eight tier right from the get-go. Now, I confidently believe that this will be a title contender team, and I expect them to be semi-finalists. That's for me, right? Based on the talent, and I think that- We don't have a semi-final anymore. That's not how our format whatever works. Whatever the new thing is. your turn while but, I try to think yeah, about that one, you can now, go. That's why, because the lack of cohesion God. is why I put them in B tier. Vettius, all I'm going to say is that if you see someone like a car just rolling towards an accident, you should say something. You don't just let it hit the other car and then right. be like, I was going to let you finish <laughs> before you put it in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that Origin have an incredible infrastructure. They have so many veterans. They have yeah. so much experience on this team yeah. that I just think that putting them in B tier is unfair. There's no way they're on the same level as Splice and Schalke. Okay. They are a tier and Hold a how many Hold titles? On. How many titles has that roster won? How many titles has Splice and Can Schalke won? Can we count the won? Australia titles? <laughs> no, hang on. Know. Hang on. What, what, what you want to do Wait, is what? you want to put listen, them on the same listen. tier he as G2, Fnatic, and Vitality. Yeah, that's true. You got to respect the back. You can't hit the gavel! That's for your gavel hit, but he's right. You got you. to let Frost go finish. Anywho. Now, the thing I want to ask to both of you is because you're like, oh, look at all the star studded power, and you're like, this roster's never played together. Why? You guys are all so against Misfits, though, and it's a lot of the same arguments. No, it's, the thing is, is once Misfits get up to power and, like, Fevivin returns to like EU misfits. mid lane form, then I'm like, holy, like, it's between, for me, it's between Origin and Misfits of who's going to take that, that spot. Yeah, that's why. Again. Oh. Right, can I jump in on that, please? Is that okay? No, sir. Good, oh, sir. May I jump on on the Misfits Wait, point? This please. order would have been oh, so sure. much better. Okay, Misfits point real quick, yes. and then we're we're slapping Origin on that board somewhere. I never said Misfits were eighth, right? <laughs> I was going to put Misfits fifth and Origin fourth, because I think they're both very close to each other, and I think they're very similar. I just have more faith in Origin early on in the split than I do Misfits. But I think that both of them are very good teams. I think both of them have huge potential, and both of them can be challenging for the title. So that's why I put them both in the same tier, because I think that's why I put Spice and Schalke in C, Origin and Misfits in B, and then everyone else in A. Good, sir. Why do you have no one in S? Because I don't believe that you can, I don't think any of them can be S tier right from the start with all the changes that have happened. Deficio, mm. I don't know why I'm asking you because <laughs> you work for Origin. <laughs> <laughs> Is Origin an A tier team or a I, B tier team? You did say putting the middle of the pack from the get-go in your interview is not an unfair statement for Origin. Yeah, I mean... Interview Deficio or right now Deficio? <laughs> you can be B tier or A tier. It's all on you. Um, Man. Uh, I would put us... If I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit biased. I'll put us A tier in this case. It's B tier. You uh, lost. <laughs> you had the choice not to be biased. I and said you, A tier. You uh, put them B tier. They're, they're in A if, tier. If I let you put... Yourself, A tier, people okay. be like, this is the worst list of all time. The, prob go, the, go to the problem B. that we have here, right? Can, yeah, fine. I don't, I don't, what? Why are my points not valid? They are valid. Your points the, are valid. The problem that we ultimately have here is that you have a huge discrepancy between the level of misfits early on compared to everyone else. But this else. has nothing to do with misfits. I'm talking no, about no, the no, discrepancy between the... Splice, Shulka, and Origin. No, my point is- Misfits the... isn't even a part of that right now for my discussion. But like the 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 thing that I think Deficio and I are quite aligned on is that Shalka, Splice, and SK are similar in their ranges, right? Agree. And then I would put Misfits and Origin above those and then those two in a similar range to each other, and then I'd put another tier above them, which is why I would put Schalke and Splice in C, and then Origin and Misfits in B, which is where this discrepancy comes from. Oh, we have, to have, we have five B. tiers. You can't just choose to make it four tiers. The problem is, is your semantics right now when we're saying the exact same thing. You, oh, so, you would, so you would do... Oh, good, sir. So you would do this, then? No, 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 no. Put Misfits back down to B. Do we need to, to do B. anything, That's or what do we just let them fight? We decided I think it's here. Interesting. Now I would drop <laughs> Fnatic to A tier. Don't you which, touch any of the ones we've already placed. Yeah, sure, those are staying. And I would put Fnatic before Origin, because technically this is how I'd rank them. I wouldn't say that Origin are better than Fnatic, but I think that they're on the same tier. Well, okay, fine, but that doesn't matter. I think that either. discrepancy is important. You're not watching, <laughs> they're moving around the magnets wildly. It's hard to explain. This one is... And the reason why I don't have Fnatic in S tier is because losing caps hurts. That's my one point. <laughs> So, put Origin back in B tier, because we made that decision. You can't what? put your own How team in A tier. I know, you can't put your team in A tier. It was a test. <laughs> you failed. Put them in B. Why? That doesn't... Your logic makes no sense. Uh, I'm so, like, this is... Okay, this, this is, is the worst system. power ranking <laughs> ever. Is, we should all, instead, 
put our power rankings up there and discuss them because we will never agree on a power ranking because Frosk is wrong about Misfits. Well, we've been here for an hour <laughs> and Frosk has some very controversial Misfits opinion, which I... <laughs> Which so, is very. Let me let me just let me. Okay. No no no. We're, we are an hour boy. into this podcast. We are not starting over. <laughs> <laughs> Those first five teams are locked. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> None of us agree on this this tier list. <sighs> the only thing we disagree with on is misfits and the fact that right, S tier is... must be used, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and Why gentlemen, for the first time in Euphoria history, we've failed. We've failed miserably <laughs> to make a tier this list. This started off very poorly as this well. Is I blame you. Start. Uh, Wait, this is, I, I haven't done nothing. Not you, this, him. This is the ju- there are two of us. <laughs> I, I'm going to blame it on Deficio because he's a guest. Flawed. The system was flawed. I'll take it. The <laughs> system was flawed. System flawed? This guy came in with no, four tiers. No, again, the problem is irrelevant. The point is we can't all agree on a power ranking. I 100% The point understand. was we were supposed yes. to like crowdsource a power ranking. Right, that's my and point. It the turns point out is, that if you only have two points of information and one person says A is good and one person says B is good, it's a tie and everyone ends up in the yes, middle. Right, which is why judges. Origin is in B tier, by the way. That one's locked too. We got three teams right. left. You know what? We're going to call Put this episode the worst power ranking of all time. That's what the name of this episode is going to be. Congrats. We've, <laughs> you've done it. We've all achieved that together. Give yourself a round of applause. But we're going to make a power ranking. Don't just put them all in S tier. Well, I haven't. I, I, they're not assigned yet. There's not oh much space on the board, good sir. <laughs> we have three. We have three teams left. Can we talk more about Origin? <laughs> no. <laughs> can you ask us about, like, Vettius, can you flip the Origin logo or? the right way? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Hey, the man's right here. What you got to the right way. That well, is the right way. It that's not how that works. Down, that's it not points how that logo left. works. Can you point that way? No, no points no. left. Keep, keep, keep rotating. There you it's, go. There you go. Whoa. No one heard that. It doesn't matter. Yet. Leave it. Leave it. So uh, I guess the interesting one that I'm not ready to host three analysts. That's what I've learned. <laughs> I need to grow. Um, Someone find shocks. <laughs> we we probably have to talk about some of the biggest teams. In the I end. feel like we do. Let's get on it. I think Fnatic obviously with. With with shocks, uh, shocks, frosk. <laughs> no, no, Hello. I said shocks. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Before we begin, Jack? let me let, you, <laughs> let me set some constraints. We're going to talk about the three remaining teams. We're going to loosely agree, for argument's sake, that these are the top three teams because yes. that's where we ended up at. Did we all agree with that? Yes. No. Oh, good I don't care. Work. Oh, you we don't did. matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a safe one to put no. them all. And three. I just want yeah. you. To, I just want to know when you're making your arguments how they relate to each other. Let's just put them in order. And I don't care if you put them S or A. We can figure that out at the end. Sure. Just tell me who you think is the best of these ones. Who you think is the worst? Who's number two? That's how we're going to proceed from here. Deficio, you were speaking. You may continue. Good. I, I was just going to set up the question regarding Fnatic. Like, they still have Reckless, who's <laughs> really good. Um, when you have Reckless in the bot lane, you know in the late game, Reckless will always carry and win you the game. Um, in Europe, at least. Maybe not uh, as easy as, as it was in, 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 the, in the past, but I'm interested in knowing from you, Frosk, why is Fnatic not in the same tier as... By Teltian G2. I felt like Caps was a huge part of Fnatic's success mm -hmm. um, in so many different ways, not just in the PowerPoint in the mid lane, but then how it spread around the map. And then just kind of that X factor that Caps gave Fnatic this uh, most recent performance of this most recent year. And while Reckless and Hilly are still a very strong duo, again, like you're saying, it's not as easy to just get a free ride and a free win in the bot lane anymore in Europe. There were massive upgrades across the board in terms of the support talent that came up. And while Hilly and Reckless are always going to have you know, a respectable edge, it's not free. They don't just get to coast through. And Whippo, um, while he skyrocketed to, uh, you know, uh, fame and fortune and having these incredible performances, and Vettius knows, I'm a big Whippo fan, it's still, you know, a very young and experienced player. I think Nemesis coming in, he's not going to be Caps. It doesn't matter if he's great, he could be amazing, but he's just not going to be Caps. And Fnatic need to figure out how to fix that um, or at least kind of evolve around Nemesis. If this means that Brox is going to take a more carry-oriented role, like what we saw at World, uh, if Nemesis just needs some experience to step up and kind of find his role, for me, I actually think this Fnatic will really thrive if they play Brox up Whippo and they try to make Whippo a really hard carry in the lane phase. But again, the TP doesn't have as much impact into the bottom lane as it once did to help out Reckless. I just think the meta is going too fast to rely entirely on the Reckless factor for Fnatic. So preseason, yeah, yeah. I don't have Fnatic in the S tier just yet because I feel like Caps is a massive loss to them and they need time to... Uh, you know, program this new mid laner into their system before they have a chance at the title. So who, what is your top three then in order? 
It's G2, Vitality, and Fnatic. Mm. I think just to add in on Fnatic, um, now I have no clue what their level is because we obviously played in week one. Um, but I look at this lineup and I think losing Source and Caps obviously make a suck. It would suck for any team to lose those two guys. Um, I think on the international level, if it's about going back to a world final, I think Fnatic are weaker uh, losing those two guys. I think in Europe, though, like Broxa, Whippo, Reckless, Hillesang, if we just take the four guys who, who remain, were well, all four really, really... Uh, have always all been very, very strong in Europe at different back -back times. Back-to-back titles. Uh, obviously, Reckless, you can argue with him when he you know, benched himself and so on. He had a, a rough summer split, but he had a really good final. But I think Hillesang, Brox, and Whippo, in any sort of meta where there is fighting, are like fantastic players. And in Europe, that hasn't changed by losing Caps. Now, the question is, of course, how do they play around Nemesis? Do they do what they did with Caps? Do they not do that? I, I have no clue, but... I think Nemesis is, 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 is a strong mid laner. He will not be Caps, obviously, because that's almost impossible. Um, but I, I don't think he, he downgrades the team enough for me to not put Fnatic as number one coming into the split uh, because they have four out of five um, of the other guys still playing. And, and obviously, I think Brox and Hillesang as a combo, if I look at support jungle, uh, are going to do so much work. Vetti, do you agree on Fnatic at number one coming into the split? Number one coming into the split? That's what, that's what Deficio is saying here. No. Who would you put at number one and why? So, like, people aren't going to like this, but Vitality for me is a team that I expect to be really good from the get-go. Very similar reasons to Deficio. Four of the five remaining players, um, in theory, from what I've been told from Yamato, an upgrade in the jungle, you know? Um, and this is a team that went from fourth to third, and they had a fantastic world run, and they sure, they still have issues that I'm sure they're working through, and I don't think they're going to be ironed out right from the beginning of the split, but um, I just think that a change from Kikis to Mowgli is a smaller change than Caps to Nemesis, and the same of Perks to AD Carry. But do you feel like Fnatic and Vitality were close in level to each other last split? No, I felt like that there was a big advantage in favor of Fnatic. So even then with Fnatic making a bigger change, is that big enough of a change that it moved them a level underneath? Yeah. Okay. Early on in the split. I mean, dude, Vital <laughs> I think Vitality are great. You know, like Caps so, is a massive loss. But like but this is this is the thing for me. Like it's this is why I put all of them in the same tier, because I think they all experienced very similar changes. And I think all of them uh should be very strong. They made few changes, but the changes that they did make were noticeable. The thing for me is Vitalities was the least notable. Now, if they lost Jazuke, I think we'd be having a different conversation. But uh, while Kikis was very impactful, we also saw the drawbacks of Kikis, I think, at Worlds and, and Finals. And I think that Mowgli, hopefully, will be able to bring that aggression with a little bit more consistency. So I think in terms of the, the amount of impact that the changes have had is the smallest of Vitality, which is the only reason why I put them above the other two early on in the split. But I still put them all in the same tier. Whether it be S or A ultimately doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. But For I sure. still think that they're just the, the change is not as impactful as it was in the other two. And we've also seen them change junglers before. Right, and it, it felt like a pretty easy transition for the team, so they're not strangers to that process. Frosk, who did you have as number one? I put G2, G2. and I think it's really easy for people to hone in on like the whole perks ADC thing, um, which I don't want to fall down that rabbit hole. I actually think what not enough people are talking about is Wonder and Mickey. Those guys mm -hmm. are really good. Uh, bringing Mickey into that bottom lane alongside Perks, like at least he's got someone down there who you know is going to be solid. There's not going to be a question about that support pool. And Wonder showed up at Worlds. And like for how, however well Whippo did, I think Wonder was just as impressive on that international stage, if not slightly more impressive, because he was a bit more consistent when you take into account that Whippo had to go into the finals and didn't really have a great, you know, day, let's say. But even if you eliminate that, Wonder's still great. So I think too many people look at G2, they're just like, it's just about the, the Perks thing. I have faith that Perks can make the change. Uh, Cassiopeia is really strong right now. There's sure. other majors that can slot down there. I don't think he has to play an ADC, but not enough people are talking about Mickey and Wonder, and those guys are really good right now. 
Do you think there's an argument to put all three of these teams in S tier? Do you think they're a tier above the rest of the teams? A or S is the same. I mean, I think... I'm just, I'm just asking. Do you think that these guys are, like, head and shoulders above the rest in terms of... I think of there's a gap between them and Misfits and Origin, personally, because I think, again, for me, the synergy thing is, is a big deal. Yeah. And Origin and Misfits haven't had time to build that synergy yet. Um, ask me in Summer Split, and that gap will probably close. But right now, they are a gap. They are a tier below Vitality, G2, and uh, Fnatic. I think that's very fair. Um, no arguments on my side regarding putting those three guys as the top ones. I don't think necessarily you put them S versus B tier, but I think putting them as the top three teams that's coming why into it. Origin should be an A. Do you, do you really want Origin and A to fish here? So I just want as... <laughs> this is your tier list, not my tier list. <laughs> You've, you, it was we, yours at the just, start and you shirked responsibility. Can we just responsibility. publish two tier lists? Is that possible? We have mine oh and we have Frost's and then the can fans can engage with which one they prefer more or they can generate discussion or whatever. Sure. I feel like that is this is the, This is the time. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna, he just can, takes that as the easy one because fans won't like where I put Misfits, but that's fine, fans, because we'll see who's right on day one, I week one. I will be one. right. I'm very <laughs> confident. <laughs> we're going to publish both your tier lists. Thank you. That's Great, congrats. But this tier list, the one that you built together, that's gonna have your name on it, kiddo. I'm it's sorry. Never, I will not put <laughs> my name on Do you remember, do you remember, do you remember, do you remember college when you did a group project and that one guy ruined it I for you? <laughs> at least at least put all three in A tier then, and then you can, Thank you. You can What's somewhat call it a table of contents? We can call it a day. If you put all those three in A tier, you can somewhat call it no, a day. No, we're going up. I mean, I, I accept the change. Frost is making the change, not me. Help me. Ladies and gentlemen, I helped. We I present to you. Ourselves. The worst tier list ever. Our Excel magnet broke. So it's also bad. the wrong logo. You know the best part is people will see the tier list and they they won't they won't listen to to why and they'll be like, oh yeah, <laughs> Origin is obviously alone up there because of <laughs> Fischio. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Hold on, we're making it. Uh, guys at home, I'm gonna read this off to you. This, wait, You're gonna love this one. This is so easy to make fans not I rage. I don't no, agree no, with this stop. tier list. No, but like stop. that's stop. What, I you don't lost, agree you with this. Ladies and gentlemen at home, this is the tier list that Deficio Vedius. And Frost oh, Grin made that. together. <laughs> Let me read it off to you. It goes like that. this. It goes D tier Excel, D tier Rogue, C tier SK Gaming, B tier is Splice, Shalka oh. and Misfits Gaming. A is Origin, and S is a combination of Vitality, G2, and Fnatic, with each one of our panel members picking a different one to be number one in EU. Early in the split. Early in the split. This is initial <laughs> this split is week power one rankings. power <laughs> rankings. Wait, is it? Whoa. Yeah, uh, that is preseason week one pre power week, rankings. Preseason week one, same thing. All right. Fine. Yeah, Misfits doesn't sound so crazy now, does it? <laughs> okay. And there, ladies and gentlemen, we have the worst power rankings Definitely ever. Definitely the worst. So ever. I'm going to put the board away. We have one more segment to go Oof. today. Uh, that right. took way longer than expected. But luckily, while we have struggled to keep our opinions concise, Twitter has done us a big favor by limiting everyone to 280 characters. And all you guys at home have given us your overhyped or underrated players. Thank you, Vedius, for taking the board. Um, yeah, I give you Excel. Sorry, Excel, your logo fell off. Also, we, like we'll Jonas. get your new logo for next week. Um, hold the gavel there. All right, so you guys took to Twitter. There was a ton of interaction about overhype and underrated for the preseason. So many of you responded, so I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, it was super great. Now, we've picked a couple to go through. Deficio, is there anyone you'd like to start with? Like Jonas? Like my boy Jonas here? Down there at the bottom? All right, well, you are... What was that about? Jonas says this. Exile, so Jonas at J Jonaso, uh, says, Exile underrated gorilla Overrated. There's a there's a second part. I was just gonna pick one. Do you want to do the second one instead? Shaka and SK underrated. Vitality and Misfits overrated. Ooh. You can pick one. I don't want to. Uh, you submitted a lot of things there, Jonas. We're gonna. So the funny thing is, right? Pick one of those things to reply. The to. The overrated thing. Which one? The Misfits one. Misfits <laughs> overrated. Got it. Go. So the funny thing is, right? You know, we talk about, I think we all agree that Misfits is pretty overrated by many fans, right? Because We don't know that. I, I, I well, don't so, know. so when I read comments, largely from Reddit and Twitter, right? Those are my pools. So I you apologize. You got like some MySpace on there? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm afraid I haven't reached out to the MySpace community. High activity um, rate on that MySpace. Um, <laughs> right? so I can do it. But um, <laughs> I think many fans have considered Misfits to already be like that S tier team. Yeah, right? that's obviously too high. And yes. that's what I mean by overrated. So... Me and Deficio putting them down to like B tier or like a tier down. I mean, I, I, yeah, I would just put like, I think if you're, if you're putting based on the rosters without having watched them play, right? If you're putting Origin in A, then you have to put Misfits in A as well. I agree. Like that's just the way I'm looking at it. Yep. 
uh, between the teams. But I also agree that instantly slotting them into S tier felt too much. Yep, I agree. We're also not doing the judge thing anymore, Deficio, so you can take this <laughs> off. No, but my hair is ruined. <laughs> yeah. My hair is ruined, too. I have too. to keep it on. Oh. Oh. Right, next topic. We don't have that much time. No, it's us. true. I'm going to pass one on to Deficio. Deficio, uh, Marv R, at Nova, Nova Noxus 04, says, I think Schalke is heavily underrated. They've got the best AD carry in LEC, Schalke, mm-hmm. upset, and a jungle which carried a mediocre team almost to playoffs. I like that. Carried a mediocre team almost to playoffs. Did get to playoff <laughs> once, but... That's like the cloud of a silver lining. That's like, oof. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, is Schalke underrated? Do you think... Because yeah. they're not showing up a lot in the Reddit threads, and people aren't... I mean, I, I think... I think this is what I love about the LEC now, and this is something I... S- I didn't say I don't say this is a PR thing, and I, um, but I think we have a lot of of the middle of the table teams that actually have really really good rosters. Where in the past we've had issues where we had a top, we were like, yeah, those teams are great, and then we had a middle, we were like, oh, don't really know what's happening here. Super inconsistent. They have like one star player each team maybe, and then we had like one or two bottom teams that that obviously heavily struggled, but. I think like if I look at someone like Schalke, who where the initial ranking you would put them is just like straight in the middle, right? Um, I think that lineup has a lot more potential than people probably give them credit for. Because if you think about it also, like they have a rookie mid laner, but they have probably one of the better setups for a rookie mid laner to not have to uh, carry the game. Because you have like, you, you can play topside with Oramne Memento. Um, you have Upset, who is a fantastic in the bot lane. And if Ignar can get back to the level he showed uh, during his peak in Europe, he wasn't consistent when he was in Europe last time, but when he actually really showed off on like very aggressive support picks, then you can have a really, really strong bot lane too. So I think Schalke's lineup is one of those teams that will never be really fun to play against. Uh, they won't win the split, but they will definitely fight for playoffs, and I think they will also make playoffs. I think it's really fair in this idea that there's kind of like five teams, like Origin, Misfits, Schalke, Splice, and let's say SK on like the very bottom end. And not saying it goes in that order, mm-hmm. but just kind of in that like herd, and then you have the three. Yeah, a lot of things can happen the there. That is, you must be very consistent. You must be incredibly focused. You can't drop a game to anyone because those teams will be the deciders of who's actually in that gate to playoffs. And it is very competitive there. Or I believe it will be very competitive. I mean, and you might even, depending on how things are going the first couple of weeks, like there is a chance one of the three guys from the top can slot into that big group as well, right? Yep. Um, and I think that's super, super exciting. If Rogan XL then ends up showing up with some of the, the rosters they have, you can have an insane race like we had in Spring Split where no one knows what's happening. Oh, God. That was uh, the best, the that was the best and yeah, the worst like, It was ever. the crazy thing. But what's I, the hashtag? Every, every game, game counts. counts. There you go. Uh, yeah, I just yeah, feel like job, if, if we compare to that Spring Split, I think the rosters now overall across the 10 teams are stronger than they were in that Spring Split. So if it is, and if it is super even... It's going to be even because we have more good teams and not because we have more bad teams. Hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, just on paper, right? On yeah, paper. on paper, and it looks good. So now, I think, yeah, Schalke underrated. One final overhyped underrated from the audience. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance because I definitely can't pronounce your name. Uh, Sisman Warika at Sisman underscore WW. Uh, apologies, once again, for not being able to pronounce your name. Uh, he says, I think Rogue is underrated with their long-term approach. They've got very solid roster on the main team with Kickus and Wadid, and they signed some good talent alongside some veterans for Academy. They won't crush Spring Split, but they will definitely do well in summer. Now, you guys, hmm. everyone pretty much agreed that Rogue was towards the bottom, if not at the bottom, uh, on all sides. But Frosty, you're the only one who hasn't gotten to take one yet, to start one yet at least. So why don't you start this one? Is Rogue a long-term team where you see them rising up, becoming this great, powerful force. Maybe with Larson, they talked about bringing in the summer split. Or is this a team where you kind of expect them to be something else? I definitely think that there is uh, room to grow for Rogue, especially because of all the hype behind Larson. I just have to say that, you know, when I was really looking at my move to Europe, I had to get behind Rogue as having the bot lane that defeated Uzi and Ming. So Wadid down there have to give him his credit. I'm like, this makes me hype for Rogue. I got got to get behind the best bot lane in the world. I'm missing Jan in there. <laughs> Wadid and EQ, the bot lane that took down Uzi. You heard it here. Is that revisionist history? That feels like revisionist Don't history. go back to I those bots. <laughs> I was there live. I cast it. I saw Uzi fall at the hands of Jan and Wadid. I, was, I said EQ. That was... Oh. <laughs> I'm sure he will be fine. He was there in <laughs> spirit. <laughs> he was, he was there I will say spirit. this. So I was watching some Raw Cat uh, videos yesterday just to kind of like get up to speed with Memento and Hikyu. Hikyu has luscious hair. He has oh. so much hair. Mm. 
All right, we next can do tweet, it. please. That's it. We're going to call that right there. Right. That is the final tweet. I like the Academy team a lot on Rogue. There is a lot of potential there. For yeah. That's true. I also like I that when we ran out of nice things to say after the bot lane defeated Uzi, we went to Hikyu's nice hair. I kept staring at <laughs> I was like, this guy has great hair. Final thing. There was a bet. And some stakes were laid out earlier, some loose stakes, but there's terms, loose okay. terms. What is the bet? SK versus Misfits. All right. <sighs> Vettius in the Misfits camp. 100%. <laughs> Proskuron has taken the SK camp. In week one, yes. You no, you can't no, just no, get no, no, week yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be two weeks. Weeks. initial power rankings, but you have to predict on two weeks because two games is not enough. It's if this was enough. best of three, I'd let you predict I on week one. I heard that this was preseason week one power rankings. So you think by week two, your power rankings are going to be wrong. You think by week two, Misfits is going to pass SK. They're going to go from think... eighth to sixth. <laughs> 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 just checking. In one week, they're going to rise up two spots. Mm, I do think that they're going to get better over time, but I don't really know what the also, timeline is Also, on can it. I just clarify... Is the bet Misfits will have a better score? That's what we're trying to find out right now. Okay, because like being when a better score. Because my point is right. Like um, again, you have to look at the schedule for this, right? And SK, I think, have a harder schedule than Misfits in the first two weeks. They have Fnatic at least game one. SK have Fnatic in game one, right? We all agree is in the top tier. Mm -hmm. So like, it Misfits may be a little have unfair. Rogue, who is in the same tier? About. If, right? <laughs> Rogue, Misfits pretty close together. So that'll, <laughs> that'll be a tough first match for Misfits. So if, if Frost, <laughs> think, if Frost wants case. to take the bet what? No. after two weeks. This is this is not a fair. There's no right. safe you bet. You guys are the one that put here, them in eighth. Because the it's off of preseason here's the thing. week one. <laughs> Bang the gavel. You're the judge. Bang the gavel. Uh, there's one other backup bet, but you're not going to like it. All right. Now, you both mentioned your tier lists. Yeah. We're going to publish them. And we have the community vote on who they think Ooh, is right. That's a good one. Then oh, yeah. I, would like I want that one. <laughs> Fnatic in my S tier, the number one team. Well, Vettius said he has no S tier in his tier list. It's true. I love this because you're sticking to your guns and you firmly believe that somehow, in the eyes of public perception, <laughs> putting Fnatic alone in S tier will save you <laughs> from misfits <laughs> All you look at in is eighth they place. Once they hit Fnatic, they stop reading. What are the stakes? You want to apologize I don't on know, air? Judge, jury, and executioner. What are the stakes? Deficient. Can they not wear this outfit for post game lobby? You can definitely wear this outfit for post game lobby. We can make that happen. Is That's that an easy one. What happens? Uh, so what? So now we're gonna make the audience tell who's they, they like vote more. They're gonna for, vote for each on one. Twitter wins poll. the vote between the two posts. Uh, we'll, we'll give it a day or like three days, let's say, because obviously people are gonna oh, filter into the podcast. And then the winner at the end will say this weekend or next weekend post game lobby at the end. We'll dress up like a judge and come on air. Okay. Suits me just fine. Boom. Fine. <laughs> this is great. Thanks, this is guys. the easiest bet I've ever won. You don't have an S tier. <laughs> I don't need it. You didn't even follow the goddamn rules. <laughs> Of course they did. You have a really hard time not swearing. I thank you everyone for listening to the worst tier list we've ever Truly made. The worst. Season three, episode one of you four. None That's of us what are this happy has been. With it. None <laughs> of us <laughs> are satisfied with this tier list. Uh, but honestly, you're gonna learn more this weekend when you come and you watch LEC. It's the first weekend. We're opening with SK versus Fnatic. We've got matches of the El day. Classico. That's OGG two. Our match of the week is Fnatic OG. <sighs> There's so many things to be excited for this Wait, week. Wait, Davicio, do you win both games? Yes or no? Oh, that wasn't a quick yes. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> That's where our real bet yes, should have been. He that does. That should have been, yes. oh, been a zero. No. <laughs> we missed the opportunity to trap Deficio because he <laughs> has to predict let's his team. Let's have Let's have two bets. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I thought it was over. You said it's over. <laughs> it is over. You lucked out this time. You're still on the wall, Shane. You're wall shaving shame. Fnatic into the side of your head at some point. One, One day I will. If One you day guys I will. lose... No, oh, save it. On, I, I, I want you to, too, but Can we've we gone on. Now? We're already very I've far already over time. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. This has been Season 1, Season... Oh, God. Season 3, Episode 1, League of Legends European Championship Podcast Euphoria. <laughs> it happens this Friday. Never let three analysts on a desk again. Wait, we did talk about the match of the week. <laughs> it's Origin versus Fnatic. <laughs> it's going to be really good. Somebody's going to win, Tune in. and you're going to find out who on Saturday. Tune in. It's the last game of the day. Uh, yeah, that's it from us. Thanks, for everyone, for watching. Bye. Bye. I'm never coming back. <laughs> <laughs>